Knicks fans of the round table. The round table discussion hosted by Knicks fans for the fans. Let's get right to these Jimmy Butler trade rumors. CK2K. Jimmy Butler has supposedly made it be known to Timberwolves management that the Knicks, the Nets, and the Clippers are on his short list of teams that he would like to be traded to. Give me your take on this. Is is this a move that you would make? Would you trade for Jimmy Butler? Man, I've been so top, topsy-turvy on this whole thing because at first when – before it was even, like, brought up, I was uh, – I was – team trade, you know, Tim Hardaway, Courtney Lee for him and all that stuff. Now at this point, it's like, why bother making any moves to move anybody on our roster when possibly we can pick them up? And it's one of those things where it's like, even if we don't pick them up, you know what I mean? The only reason why I wanted them on the team in the first place would was to be a pawn to bring in Kyrie Irving, to, 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 to be real with you. Um, he, I just feel like Jimmy Butler's in that bubble where it's like, He's still technically still kind of in his prime, but he's on his way out, you know, and I don't want to go through the Carmelo Anthony situation all over again, trading to bring him in and get him for like two good years. And then we got the end of Jimmy Butler, you know, so right now I'm leaning towards just let him let him go. Let him go to either the Clippers or the Nets or stay in Minnesota right now. That's what I'm leaning to. Al, so on, during the town hall, Steve Mills was asked about, uh, in a roundabout way, you know, Jimmy Butler, guys like Jimmy Butler, Kyrie, who potentially could be requesting trades to the team. And he kind of went back and he said, you know, we're not going to trade assets for the guy that we can get later. Um, mm-hmm. Would this be the type of deal that makes him reconsider? What do you think about this Butler trade? I think it just depends on the cost. Uh, you know, I think they made it pretty clear – that they don't want to trade any of the guys like like Knox or Nilakina, and they specifically mentioned no trading first round draft picks, uh, pretty emphatically. So it would be a pretty uh, pretty big, you know, turnabout to to all of a sudden turn around then and and decide to you know sell the farm to go for Jimmy Butler just because he listed us on a list a short list of teams. So I I think realistically, like I I wouldn't give up too much, you know, don't give up anybody that you wouldn't want to have a year from now, basically is the way that I would look at it. So if you look at it and you say, okay, if we have Jimmy Butler, then uh, we don't need Tim Hardaway Jr. next year, then, okay, trade Tim Hardaway, you know, trade Courtney Lee, whoever you got to do, as long as it's nobody that you would consider not even necessarily untouchable, but even just someone that's not at their full potential yet, isn't useful, isn't, at, at their best yet, you know, you don't want to trade anybody before they reach their peak because then you miss out on the best part. And Nilla Kina, there's clearly still a lot to come. Knox, we haven't even seen play an actual NBA game yet. You don't want to trade him. Uh, maybe the highest I would go potentially as far as like young guys on the team would be like Trey Burke, uh, something like that. If he was like the, the one that pushed it over the edge, I, I might go there. But that's about the highest. And that's about the highest I think the Knicks would probably go as well. Jay Ellis, CK says there's no way he's making that trade. It sounds like the mellow trade all over again. Alex says depends on the price. What's your take? Um, it does sound like the mellow trade all over again, man. Except he's older than mellow. I think he's older than mellow when we first got him. So it's 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 one he, of those. He would be where, thirty years old at that point. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's, it's it's just one of those things where, first and foremost, I want to start off by saying I absolutely love Jimmy Butler's game. I loved. I love two-way players, period. That's why I love the potential of keeping Frank Lakina here. And that's why I even kind of love Courtney Lee, when he, even though 3 and D is debatable, depending on what year you have him. But I love two-way players, and Jimmy Butler is my quintessential two-way player I would love to have on his team. But the thought of resigning him to a max deal for five years scares the living daylights out of me, man. <laughs> Scares me. Can you like? Can I? Can I negotiate? Can I get like a two year? Two <laughs> All right. That that, yeah. that that will be tough, man. So so CK, you, you, are you saying that at no cost are you are you trading for Jimmy or or for the right price? Would you trade for? Yeah, like Alex said, I, it, it, we have to be careful with who we're dabbling in. Like you know, like Tim probably is going to be a piece of the trade, like he has to be. But when you trade. Tim for Jimmy I think Jimmy's winning that move but I just 
Alex said it perfectly. I don't want to go anywhere, past, even like Trey Burke. Like, I don't want to touch Neil Akina. I don't want to touch Knox. I don't want to touch so on. Like, yo, he, yo, it's here's, hard. It's yo, hard. Yo, here's the thing for me, man. As much as I hate to say this, I'm not even sure Trey Burke is going to be here long term, bro. Right. Yeah. No. Is, is Trey Burke and, a long term option? And I love I Trey so. Burke, but we have so many guards here, and he's probably our best asset moving forward. Yeah. And we're trying to load up on big name free agents next season, and you're looking at what we have in the cupboard. Yeah. And people trying to push for Kyrie Irving. Trey Burke might be the, the one out the door, unfortunately, even though I would love for him to stay here long term. But it just so, I mean, I might think about Burke. I'm just saying if they would realistically do that, yes, send them. I just don't – personally just thinking about, like, the, that package, you know, of yeah. Gordon Lee, Tim Hardaway Jr., Trey Burke, like, come on. And without putting any draft picks, whether it's the first year, next year, the year after that, whatever, it, there's no way that I can see them taking that deal unless we bring another team into it. I don't, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, because the fear is right. The fear is we trade away Burke, Tim Hardaway Jr., Tim Hardaway Jr. maybe actually takes the next step. Burke takes yeah. a step. Um, Butler comes here, and we sign him to a long-term deal, and he gets injured in two years, right? <laughs> That's like the fear. And then we yeah. give away our assets and a first-round pick or whatever, and then we're stuck with another situation. That's the big thing. Al, so see, yeah. you know, knowing all that, I would do the trades. Alex, CK2K mentioned that in order to get Jimmy here, you're almost – uh, you, you're almost certainly shipping off Tim Hardaway Jr. at some point, right? Mm-hmm. I, I think the whole mm-hmm. goal is to get Jimmy Butler in addition to another free agent, i.e. Kyrie Irving or, you know, a long shot in having Kevin Durant. What mm-hmm. do you think uh, – because obviously his management is going to be conflicted. You know, they they're, they keep saying there's no shortcuts, they're not going to trade any assets. But and the reality is – if this team shows that you know they are on the rise and that the development of these young guys is in that is in that advanced level, you're gonna have to trade Tim Hardaway Jr. at some point. Um, how do you think management kind of handles that throughout the year um, in terms of potentially putting them on the block? Yeah, I mean, you have to see how the team's doing first and foremost. You know, you don't want to feel rushed into doing this move. Um, that's the biggest thing. And I don't think they will feel rushed. I, I think this is really a year where we could safely say that there's zero expectations for this team for once. So if they're losing a lot, there's no pressure to get Butler. If they're winning a little bit, maybe they feel a little more inclined to try to make an offer because they think that they could actually be competitive this year. But I, I, I think it's pretty unlikely that they're going to be even at 500 level, you know, by the time the trade deadline rolls around, they're probably going to be five, six games at least under 500 and probably outside of the playoff picture. So I don't know. I mean, I just think the only way that they would do it is if, if they're just keeping up, keeping tabs with Minnesota and Minnesota isn't getting any better offers and finally just cracks and accepts whatever the Knicks are offering that they feel comfortable offering. Um, But in reality, like honestly, with the two other teams that he listed as his preferred destinations where he would sign maximum extensions. Plus everybody's now convinced like after Paul George and now with Kawhi Leonard that you can try to get these guys that have no interest in you and try to make them like you, you know, like you could try to force them to like you. Um, There's (laughs) someone might try that. You know what I mean? Like someone could even be the Raptors for what it's worth. Actually one of the guys on my site, we were talking in our Slack channel today, uh, Drew Steele. It, he goes, what if the Raptors go for him? Like, they really – they didn't give up that much. That would be interesting, man. You, you put Kawhi. Jimmy out there with uh, Kawhi, Lowry. That would mm-hmm. be kind of dangerous. Because they got that whole, like, bench mob there. You know what yeah. I mean? They have they have Siakam. Um, OG. They, OG, Van Vliet they held on to, yeah. A yeah. right. um, couple other guys like that. So, I mean, they have – they have attractive younger guys that they could potentially send over there for Jimmy. And then they'd be like, I mean, them in Boston, like one and two period. The other, the other fear is too. What if the Brooklyn gets them? And then Kyrie's looking at Brooklyn now. And now we're thinking, damn. We yeah. Messed up. <laughs> like, yeah. But like, if it comes down to that, then just go for other free agents. You know what I mean? It's, it's not, it, it's going to be a really deep class next year. Um, you know, you're going to have a lot of, a lot of potential guys that could fit on this team coming into free agency next year. So it's not like it's Jimmy and Kyrie and then, you know, a whole bunch That's of good. scripts, you yeah. know, there's Durant, there's Clay Thompson, there's potentially a healthy boogie cousins. Um, you want, 
I'm saying. <laughs> go, ahead. Nah, go ahead. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying necessarily that I want those guys. Right, right. You know what I mean? But they're there. You know, it's yeah. it's not like it's a shallow free agent class. Right. I, right. Feel you. I don't know. I just kind of feel like the Jimmys and the Kyries are, it seems like there is some level of interest just, mm-hmm. just based off of, you know, the new cycle over the last year when it comes mm-hmm. to Durant. It seems to be bubbling. I'm not sure what's going on there. If that's even any any truth to that. I'm in I'm that five percent. <laughs> I'm in that five percent with KD. I'm I'm buying the hype. You I'm, buying you're, you're, you're on the KD hype train, CK. I am on the KD. I I feel like it makes sense. I I I I know it's crazy. I know a lot of people are thinking he might not leave Golden State, but I'm gonna be. All season, I'm gonna be on that. I'm gonna be paying attention to that for sure. Well, when he, he loves Porzingis too. Yes. I mean, all the way back in Porzingis. He gave him the, the, the nickname. He, he, gave, he him gave him the nickname. Yeah, yeah he, he gave, gave him, him the, the, nickname. Porz, the unicorn nickname. <sighs> on the last yeah. thing on on the Butler thing, um, CK, I'll go back to you. What what do you think it says about him as a player? Um, you know, there are rumors about you know his exit from Chicago wasn't that amicable, and now it seems like with the Timberwolves, him and Towns and him and Wiggins have been going at it. There, there's, now there's rumors that that Towns won't consider his extension until they get rid of Jimmy. Uh, what what do you think about his potential reputation that that's been going around now? And and in terms of is that something that the Knicks w- would would should be leery of? I I think in the Knicks situation, I don't think that's something that we should be worried about. Uh, honestly, I wasn't really thinking about that aspect of the whole thing because he would come there and he would be the vet. And he's already he's gonna have like Fizz on his in, on his side with the whole hard work thing. So I'm not too worried about that. I mean, with the situations in Chicago and uh, Minnesota, like he was probably with the standout player. But I don't know if you would say he's the he was the guy because like in his last year he had D Wade, and then with Minnesota he had you know uh, Wiggins and Cat. So I I I, I don't think and this is just me guessing with everything that I was hearing about the whole Jimmy Butler thing I don't think him coming to uh New York he would have that whole uh what's what's the word everyone's using that that whole uh he would be a locker room uh disaster yeah. I don't I don't I don't I don't a cancer yeah, yeah. is that's what I was just saying I, for lack of a better word I, I got yeah, you. yeah right 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 I right. got you so, I got you um Al what do you think way in you should the Knicks stay clear of of someone who's developing this young, type of reputation see, I actually I I said this I said this the other day on Twitter when this when this whole thing started coming up I have my worries about him especially bringing him on to a team that's constructed the way that we have right now he clearly, to me, it seems like he has a real problem with young players for whatever reason. Maybe he's strange, they, very strange. Maybe he feels that he thinks they're entitled or or that they don't work hard enough, that they don't work as hard as him personally, whatever the case. He, he doesn't seem to respect anyone who's that much younger than him. Uh, you saw it on Chicago. There was that issue where he and Wade kind of, after an ugly loss, threw a bunch of young players under the bus yeah. to the media. Yeah. And that turned into a whole thing. And then... You know, now this this time around, now it's he's got problems with Cat and Wiggins allegedly, you know, and and they're both you know under twenty five years old, and to then throw him onto a team here with Porzingis and Knox and hopefully Nilakina, you know, hopefully you're not trading any of those guys for him, he'd have to lead these guys, and it's like, does he really want to lead or does he just want to like co-star at this point? Like, does he want like one of his peers or does he want to like? Yeah. Teach? And it seems like he just wants to have his peers around him. Like he wants to have like a Team USA atmosphere kind of thing. He doesn't want to have like kids to teach. It seems like, and it, it seems like he just views that they're like beneath him in some way. You know what I mean? Like they're they're not as good as he is. They're not. They don't work as hard. They don't care as much. You know, they don't want to win as bad as he does, kind of thing. So that I, I mean, I don't know if it would ultimately come to pass. And if they got him, I'd certainly be like, okay, let's give him a shot. Like it, obviously, I'd be excited. But I'd have my worries. Like he's mm-hmm. definitely. It seems like he's got a track record now over the last few seasons of not being super into the idea of playing with these young kids. JL's jump in on this. Yeah, man, I kind of feel you on that one. Even the way he was he was traded from the Bulls to the Timberwolves was like a little head scratcher. Like they got him out of here swiftly. They did. And it ain't really. It wasn't, it wasn't like they got like a whole lot for him. They got Levine some some pieces, yeah. and it was like I right, be good. It was mm-hmm. it was very weird and very strange the way that trade happened out of the, the darkness of the night and out of the middle of nowhere. So mm-hmm. I am kind of worried about his demeanor and his rapport with young players as well. Um, now I know I've, I've seen like mixed signals on Twitter land over the past few days. I've, I've heard that 
that um cat was going to bat for him kind of saying i don't want to take care of this first before i resign I, you can take that two ways you can take that get rid of him yeah. or you can take that as resign him so he can be whole you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying so um and then i heard that jimmy said that he he was leaving more because of the organization issues and less because of the young people there so yeah. I don't know if that could be smoking mirrors to who we are, who knows, but um, my antennas are a little bit up. But the, the only reason why I'm saying why I, 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 I'm not hundred percent sold on it is because even before he came, I'm mainly the Minnesota situation before he even came to Minnesota, we've all been saying with Andrew Wiggins, is he ever going to take that next step to become the player that we all think he can be. Mm-hmm. And then he goes there and Andrew Wiggins didn't really elevate his game, which, goes into the narrative of him thinking that he's not working hard enough. And then we have the situation where the Wolves go to the playoffs for the first time and we see Cat not being Cat. So it's like they fit into that narrative of him saying that, you know, these guys aren't working hard. So that's that's why it I hear it and I get because you guys are you guys are hundred percent right with your other statements. But my thing is like I just don't know if that's going to be we don't know if that's the same thing if he comes to New York when we have like a Chris Asperzingis who has been stepping it up every year. And then we don't know what the situation would be. We have, you know, younger guys that are doing the same thing that are stepping up each year. And we don't know anything about Kevin Knox yet, but um, I just, to me, I, I don't know if I can throw Jimmy under the bus for that situation yet, because those are two very, they're very peculiar situations that he was in with the bull situation and the Teagle situation where yes, he comes off bad, but, is he wrong though? Kind of thing, you know. So that's, <laughs> my, that's my problem. True, true. Yeah, it makes sense. Go ahead, Al. Yeah, I'll, I'll let you get the last point in on on this. Yeah, I mean, there's it's it's like uh, CK was just saying. I mean, there's two there's two sides to every story. I mean, it, it might not yeah. be, he might not be this old curmudgeonly bastard, you know, who's like, <laughs> get off my lawn, you damn kids, whatever. Right, right, but right. there's there is some smoke. I don't know if there's fire. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's it's one of those that. situations where unfortunately you probably wouldn't know until you get him on his third team with a bunch of young players on it and see what yeah. happens. Maybe he's wrong though. He learned now. <laughs> yeah. And I mean I'll say clearly like all the guys on the Knicks seem like they work pretty damn hard. Like exactly. Knox is a hard worker. Porzingis is obviously a hard worker. Nilkina strikes me as a very hard worker as well. Like they're all definitely dedicated to getting better at their craft. Mm-hmm. So like maybe they would be the ones, you know, that would finally uh, change his mind or whatever. But I don't know. I, there's no way to say for sure unless you get him. It, it just it worries me a little bit. It's, yeah. I'm not totally at peace with this whole thing. I get that. Indeed, you said the same Moody would be the target. You said what about Moody? <laughs> I said, you said the same Moody would be the target. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, let's see. Let's see what happens. You know, I, I'm on the side of uh, staying patient, and and you know, JL had alluded mm-hmm. to a five year deal is a little bit scary. Alex yes. had, did allude to uh, you know, seems like he does kind of want a uh, a boys club team USA type atmosphere where you know he can kind of run the asylum with a with a fellow uh, free agent pickup. And you know, to CK's point, it does seem like the mellow trade all over again, man. So. Let's just uh, let's hope this management sits tight and, and plays this one out well. Yes, so, yo, for everybody watching at home, vote on the panel today. Who made the best points? Vote for your winner of today's round table. Was it CK2K? Was it Alex Wolf? Or was it Jay Ellis? The fan poll is up at the top hand, at the right hand side of the screen, at the top right, the little eye icon. Click on the eye and vote in tonight's fan poll for your winner. And we'll announce the winner on Saturday. Um, yeah, that's it, man. Yo, fellas, CK, Alex, J. Ellis, appreciate the time, man. Until next time. Peace. Yeah. Thanks, man.